Hey guys, Jimmy from Jimmy's Floor and Fauna. I caught a ring egg snake. I'm out here by SBC College. And um, they have a swamp back here where they do studies. And um, they do it for a uh, science class. They study the flora and fauna of the swamp. And this little guy came out on the sidewalk. This is a ring neck snake. And he's very squirmy. Um, I've kept these several times. I've caught these many times. Uh, I've lived in Kansas for a while and uh, they had them out there. And um, I've kept several of them. They eat earthworms. They're super easy to care for. Earthworms, crickets, you know, not full size crickets, but you know, medium sized crickets. Uh, this is a juvenile, they get bigger than this. Uh, they're really small snakes. I've never ever been bitten by one. They've never even attempted to bite me. Uh, they're really cool, really colorful bellies, as I'm gonna show you right now. If you can see it, he has this bright orange belly underneath. He's getting upset with me. And his tail is a bright orange color. He's really, really pretty. And these guys can get, I think, about two feet long. And I think there's uh, at least three species and maybe a couple of subspecies, I'm not for sure. I'll look it up. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a video here. And you can see his little ring back there. It's a little orange band. Uh, we're gonna do, uh, I'm gonna show you him and then I'm gonna tell you guys about him, okay? And we're gonna go into it and then we're gonna talk about ring neck snakes. And by the way, they're super cool snakes and I highly recommend them. If you ever come across them, definitely, definitely get them. They're totally cool, they're easy to care for and I believe they're uh, egg layers. But uh, super cool snake, super beautiful, easy to care for. It's pretending like it's poisonous, but it's not poisonous, it's just beautiful. They keep a dark top uh, so things don't see them and they look kind of wormy. And then if something notices them, they flip over on their, their backs and they put their tail up in the air and they try to look like there's something poisonous. So anyways, they're super cool, beautiful snake, and we're gonna let them go in the swamp over here. And this is by SBC College in Tarpon Springs. And I'm gonna kinda just toss him down in here. It's no one's gonna bother him yet. He'll probably never encounter anybody for a long time, so say goodbye. He's super, super cool. Make sure you get some good footage of him. Beautiful, beautiful snake. Very cool snake. Alright. Okay, so he's back in the swamp, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little bit of research on him and then we'll go from there. Alright, thanks guys. Please subscribe to my channel. Okay, so um, the ringneck snake, or Diadophis punctatus, is actually found uh, throughout the eastern United States, predominantly. They're found all the way up to Canada, to Mexico. Um, of course, we have them here in Florida. They're found in generally in woodlands. Uh, prairies are very common. You'll generally find them under boards, uh, large rocks that are kind of, um, you know, got little crevices under them. And um, generally when you keep them in, in uh, captivity, they want to be kept in a similar environment. Uh, they can eat, they're even found in swamps, so I mean, the di diversity of where they stay is actually uh, very variable. Um, they're fairly adaptive, they're easy to take care of. Um, I generally would feed mine earthworms, it's a great diet for them. Cover them in calcium, maybe a little vitamin dusting every once in a while. Uh, earthworms, crickets, and uh, mealworms are, were their primary diet. They can eat small lizards, maybe pinkies when they're full grown. Uh, the babies are very small, they are egg layers. And it turns out that they are actually uh, mildly venomous, but they're not venomous to people. Um, so what I mean is they're not actually venomous, uh, in the sense that they, they don't uh, actually affect us. Um, the venom is actually used to subdue um, small worms, lizards, and, and crickets, and cockroaches, and things like that. And it has no effect on people. And um, they're easy to care for. You can keep uh, two or three in a 10 to 20 gallon aquarium uh, or terrarium. And um, they generally like to have hiding areas and places where they can kind of get out of the way. And uh, other than that, they, they are egg layers and they're overall, they're really, really easy to care for. Um, these snakes are, these snakes are colubrids. And um, they, they are not killed snakes. They're very smooth scaled. Uh, very beautiful. Actually, they kind of remind me of a coral snake, or maybe um, even uh, a king snake or milk snake. Uh, the way that they look, um, they're very pretty, very attractive, and they're easy to care for.
And so they're uh, secretive by nature, and uh, they're actually about 14 subspecies, and um, they're all generally kept the same. Uh, they actually overlap in the range of where they're from. So um, other than that, they're they're super easy to care for. Some people would consider them difficult. I do not personally. Uh, you can keep them in a simple habitat with just maybe a few plants, uh, some bark chips, a water bowl, that sort of thing. Uh, you might be able to wean them on pinky mice, um, the adults, but generally they just eat earthworms and crickets and you know you want to bite them and dust them and calcium them. Uh, they don't probably need a light, but they need a hot spot, um, probably about 85 degrees. Um, they're Like I said, they're really easy to keep. You can even keep them in shelves. Um, they're, you, they can be kept similar to like a corn snake, for instance. They kind of have that secret of nature to them, uh, to where they kind of want to stay out of the way. You know, they don't want, they don't mind being handled, and uh, they just act curious about you, but they don't particularly uh, care about interacting with us. Now, uh, generally, uh, ringneck snakes throughout their range, they look the same. Um, they have um, generally either a blackish back or a gray back, and then they have a pretty orange band across them, and sometimes it's red. And then it generally, they have little half moon patterns. Some of this is, uh, uh, stronger in uh, various species to subspecies. They have uh, larger little half moons on their bellies. They're usually black, uh, intermediate between the red and orange and yellow. Uh, some of them can actually be yellow, yellow bellied. Uh, some of them can be bright red bellied. And some of them have uh, orange and red belly. Generally, the belly's red and the tail's, I mean, the belly's uh, orange and the tail is kind of reddish. I uh, like the one that I showed you, which is actually the southern ringneck snake. Uh, ringneck snakes are uh, pretty much uh, nocturnal, but sometimes they can be found in the day uh, in a geranial setting. Uh, kind of like the one that I found. I found them during the day. Um, it was a little bit overcast, I think, so you know that kind of draws them out. And I, it was pretty much the last. We had kind of an Indian summer down here, so it was the last of like, the heat wave. And it was in the 90s, actually. So. Um, now in the wild, generally, they, the ringneck snakes, they'll breed in the summertime. And uh, in the early spring. And they generally have, they lay, uh, the female lays three to uh, ten eggs. And in captivity, this can actually take them about um, a year or two to grow if fed well. Um, you don't want to overfeed them, obviously. Uh, but to get them up to sexual reproduction, you know, um, they don't generally cost that much. Um, if you do decide to purchase them instead of collecting them, um, the only thing that I can tell you from my personal experience is um, when I first moved to Kansas, I would go out into the field. And the first day that I was there, the first thing that I found, and I found uh, two or three uh, in, in uh, the area that I was at, and I found, they were the first snakes that I found there. And that was the Plains version, I believe, of the ringneck snake. And they're very similar in the way they look, but they're absolutely beautiful, stunningly beautiful snakes. But they're so small, so they're underrated. Um, but I mean, they're not hard to find. Generally, if you find old rotten wooded areas, flat boards, uh, places where people kind of uh, left trash, things like that, because that's where they'll find their food and they'll find insects and, and uh, small lizards and worms and things like that, grubs for them to eat. And um, like I said, generally they're, uh, they're kind of a shy snake, like a corn snake. So you kind of, to interact with them you either have to have a lot of them or you have to handle them a little more and you'll see them more they do come out it's just generally at night and uh, they generally come out and forage for food or you can even uh, train them to eat out of your hands and uh, I have never had any problems with them whatsoever they're absolutely beautiful and stunning snakes and I, I would absolutely recommend them to anyone even a starter person like a child um, as far as I know there's no allergic reactions to the venom um, it's very, very minute. Um, it generally doesn't even have the power to, just barely the power to over, overcome a, like an earthworm or, or a small lizard. So, and I've never ever even had a ringneck snake attempt to bite me. So, I mean, 
As far as snakes go, I highly recommend them for starters or beginners. The only thing that's difficult about them is their feeding. You have to keep worms and you have to keep uh, crickets and things like that. They're not really rodent eaters, but if you uh, entice them over, uh, they can actually, uh, I mean, they will actually eat pinky mice. But um, they can never eat a full-size mouse, maybe not much more than a fuzzy. And uh, you actually have to rub a lizard onto the, the pinky to get them to change over. And this is generally only going to be in the adult. And um, I guess this, they say this can actually reduce the smell of the defecation. Um, I'm not sure. I personally would think earthworms wouldn't be as smelly. But, but uh, anyways, they say that something similar with garter snakes. So... But if you want an easier way to take care of your snakes and, uh, you know, you're not really that interested in breeding them, this is the way to go, and it's not a problem. It's, it's super easy to do. Uh, you just rub lizards on the pinky mice, and then they get all excited, and they'll, uh, they'll go for it. Um, you can eventually wean them over to frozen pinkies, I'd imagine. Um, just like anything else, uh, any other snake, you just Google it in front of it. But like I said, it's, they're really not difficult to care for. They're easy to care for. Small terrarium. They can even be kept in shelves. They don't really need a lighting. You might need a light cycle for breeding. And um, I guess to breed them too, you might need a, a temperature differential. Um, maybe one to two months in the winter, you might cool them down into the 40s or 50s. Uh, this should have no ill effects. Make sure they're well, well fed, but make sure that they have uh, completely digested their food uh, before you do this and then uh, increase the moisture and the temperature back up and then increase their feeding and then you should have a breeding response and then introduce the pairs back together again and you don't necessarily have to separate them but it actually uh, creates like a stimulus for the males they get excited because there's a female in, the, in their presence and um, this can actually increase your chances of breeding the snakes so um, that's about it for ringneck snakes, guys. They're super cool. I highly recommend them. And I, to be honest with you, I love them. They're so beautiful. Um, if you guys want to give them a try, um, that's all for now. And this is Jimmy Floor and Fauna. All right, thanks, guys. Please subscribe to my channel. Hey guys, Jimmy from Jimmy's Floor and Fauna. Please buy my new book. It's called DIY Do It Yourself Nano Reef Handbook. And I'm selling it for $23 online. You can find it on Amazon.com and BarnesandNoble.com. And, uh, or you can email me and uh, I will be happy to send you out a copy. All right, thanks guys. Okay guys, that's it for now. And I hope you like my video, and uh, please don't forget to sit, hit that subscribe button, and uh, hit the like button, and uh, you can also find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and uh, I'm under either Jimmy's Flora and Fauna, or Jimmy Pearsall. Thanks guys, that's all for now.